Today we're going to look at the subject of biodiversity and why it's important for business. Joining me today in the studio is Professor Richard Wilding. Now Richard, biodiversity, it seems a long way from your subject area, which is supply chain. Can you say what biodiversity is first of all, and then go on to say a bit more about why you think biodiversity is important for a business? Okay, well biodiversity, really if we think about it, it's quite a simple concept. It's about encouraging variety. So if we think about what we're trying to encourage is a variety of plant life, which encourages a variety of insect life, which then encourages a variety of birds and mammals and, and so on and so forth. If you take just the simple example of, say, your back garden, if you just concreted it and just had concrete or paviers, you're going to have very little biodiversity, just perhaps a few bits of grass coming up between the cracks and uh, some ants walking around. If you then plant a lawn, you're then going to have sort of various insects which can live in the lawn. If, however, you then start planting shrubs, that will in, um, actually attract more insects, for example, which will then mean that you'll perhaps get more birds. Believe it or not, if you actually plant an oak tree, that can actually sustain, I think somebody did a calculation, of around 250 different insect species. So from a business point of view, this is actually quite critical because our actions have a big impact on the amount of variety that we have in, in terms of, you know, natural variety, locally, you know, it could be if you're building a factory, for example, you know, you're concreting, putting big car parks in, you've got a, a big roofing structure. How much biodiversity does that encourage or does it deplete it? And are there things we can do to actually ensure that we can actually generate more biodiversity through our actions? Should we care about this in business? I mean, it's all very well for specialists to say we need to, you know, nurture the environment. But what about hard-nosed businessmen? The big issue with this is, is recently we've had the Stern report, which is very much focused on CO2. The next CO2 is biodiversity. What is actually happening is there's been a, a recent report which has just come out, which is all about what well, it's called the TEEB report, which is the economics of, eco of ecosystems and biodiversity. And they're looking at this for business. Now, the reason is, is with, from a supply chain concept, for example, already consumers are waking up to the fact that, you know, you don't want to have, say, child labour being incorporated into your products. It is going to be bad for business, for example, if you're associated with the destruction of biodiversity. You know, this might be on a grand scale that all of a sudden, you know, certain monkeys or things like that are dying. But it, at the same time, we have to recognise our impact can have a significant impact on the whole issue of, uh, for example, CO2. They reckon that it is worth to us $3.7 trillion, the amount of CO2 which is locked up in forests. So is our business, is our supply chain starting to actually remove forestation and what things can we do to offset that and ensure that we're not having a, a poor impact. So let's focus in a bit more then what should business be doing? Well there's really four key things they need to consider. The first thing is which is very important is you need to identify how you're impacting on you know on biodiversity not just at your own sites which is very important but also further out through your supply chain. We also need to actually assess the risks and opportunities because it's not just about destruction, there is actually good news here. If we manage our businesses correctly, we can increase biodiversity. I mean, for example, some organisations are putting up warehousing systems. The warehouses, of course, have lots of water runoff from the roofs. So they're able to actually create sort of wetlands, which then can support and increase the amount of biodiversity locally, which is great for local people. In fact, some businesses are even being able to create sub opportunities in terms of recreational use of those nice environments. You know, it might be a lake which has water skiing on it and, so, and fishing and so on and so forth. So you need to think about the risks and opportunities. We then need to have targets and measures. You know, rather like with CO2, we had to have targets and measures for CO2 that is now occurring in biodiversity. And the bottom line is, is we've got to avoid, minimise and also mitigate any risks 
which are, which are actually taking place. Now what's really exciting about this from my perspective is, is that Cranfield School of Management, we're working with a company called Middlemarch Environmental and Middlemarch specialises in looking at this area and what we're doing at the moment is a research project to actually develop a biodiversity risk assessment tool which is actually going to aid businesses to look at this area in more detail. So the message that you'd want to leave people with is biodiversity is important for business, there's costs in this for the future if we don't, and that some actions we all need to take. Yeah, some actions we need to take. It's something which we can't overlook. And the other thing for us personally, let's take a look at our back gardens and see how we can increase the biodiversity even there. And if businesses, if we can get that mentality into, uh, into ourselves, then when we're actually working and managing within organisations, we can start walking around our facilities and saying, what opportunities are there here for actually increasing biodiversity? It'll be good for everybody. Thank you very much, Richard.